The Daytona 500 is the biggest event in NASCAR, both for the season and just for the history of the sport in general. We've seen just about everything from it, and in 2003, we saw its shortest run in length. But just because it was short doesn't mean the race doesn't warrant a look back, as plenty was interesting and still is today about this race and a bit of lead up. Entering the 2003 season, for instance, the cars were the first big change. A common template would be used, regardless of which of the four manufacturers a car or team was. But the man of speed weeks, no matter the car in 2003, was none other than NASCAR's favorite son, Dale Earnhardt Jr. They can't do it. They can't catch him. Junior dropped to the bottom to try to break that draft and now swings back up high to lead them into turn three. Johnson to the apron and hangs on to it. Woo. Woo. Boxed. Ryan Newman held the bottom line. Boxed, yeah. He had to get out of the throttle and you see him going backwards. Second last year to Tony Stewart. Here Dale goes. Earnhardt Jr. started last and will finish first in the Bucs shootout. But Tony's not going to allow that. Every position you get from here to the line, you start one roll further forward of the 500, and here they come. Yep. Dale Jr. to win it. Waltrip, Bodine, Wallace. Him running out. One and a half laps to go. And McMurray in the one. He's trapped on the high side now. He oh, oh, trouble, 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 trouble. That's Vassar. Jimmy Vassar in the 30. And he takes Jason Keller with him hard into the outside oh, wall. Right in and it. then gets hit hard by Mike McLaughlin. Now, this will be the race here. Remember, they will not red flag this race as they come to the white flag and the caution. This is the race for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Earnhardt Jr., under caution, will come to the checkered flag to score his third victory of Speed Weeks, something his famous father did four times. Three Speed Week wins, his 16th career Bush Series victory. Since his emotional 2001 Daytona win, Dale Jr. had won four of the last six cup races that were restrictor plate run. DEI, as a whole, had five of six with Michael Waltrip's 2002 Pepsi 400 win, and he also won the Daytona 500 in 2001 with Dale Jr. in second. So DEI was far and away the favorite, and everybody knew it. So, come Sunday, over 200,000 spectators flooded into Daytona International Speedway to see the great American race. After pre-race festivities and Mariah Carey's rendition of the national anthem, all that was left was the great American race. On top of winning NASCAR's biggest race, a sense of urgency was in the air as rain was approaching the behemoth speedway. 43 cars. 500 scheduled miles, 200,000 in the stands, over 20 million at home, and a green flag. Pit stops, a lot of green flag stops. And KDW, like I tell you before every race, reach a red pull up the belts tight one more time. Let's go racing, boys. Green flag. and Casey Mears because of backup car. But at the front, they're not going to give Jeff Green his first lap. No, sir. And you can see already that there's take no prisoners today. We're flat out racing. Teammates, all, all bets are off. Michael Walton, he'll lead the first lap. Michael Walter would be the first leader, but through the pack, action was abundant. Three wide, all out. With help from drafting partner Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr. made it a 1-2 DEI duo at lap 5, the 15 and the 8. With the front going single file, DEI had a vice grip on the field. The field's greatest fear, as the only ones who could beat DEI cars, were DEI cars themselves. With rain ever present, the goal was to log some laps off, try to get halfway. 
And after having an early spin with Bobby Labonte and a restart, approaching the 60 lap mark, fuel would be on the mind of pretty much everyone. At least that was until. Yeah, here they come. Here comes straight. You can see the whole right side. Well, back there, his right side's all torn up because he got into the, into the wall. The best news, driver number 12, Ryan Newman, climbed out of that car unhurt. Newman's huge tumble would be one of many in his NASCAR career, especially at Daytona. Forgotten often in this wreck was that Kenny Schrader and Bobby Labonte had crashed onto pit road. Though, once again, luck was on their side as nobody was injured. But what this caution did was slow the field down right when the rains arrived. The red flag would come out, pausing the race. Nothing but the sound of jet dryers would fill the air in Daytona. And after this long red flag, the sun did return to the Florida sky. With it, drivers returned to their cars, but trouble also returned, this time for leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. The cars wouldn't fire as the red went to yellow. Nobody had ever won the Clash duels in 500 in the same weekend, and Dale Jr. looked well on his way to doing so. But now, again, this was in jeopardy. The eight car got rolling at least, and nonetheless the field would manage to get back racing. Though it wouldn't be long for rain to be a threat again over the gloomy skies. And at the same time, with only 14 laps to halfway, the eight car had a gloomy turn in his day, as the bud machine was losing power. While trying to stay out and preserve positions and hope for a caution, they just needed to pit. The chances of a perfect week standing still with the battery change while the field went around at 180 miles an hour. On the track, teammate Michael Waltrip battled Tony Stewart and Kevin Harvick, and the halfway point, when the race would be official, was quickly approaching. In this time, Earnhardt's one minute, seven second pit stop put him two laps down. And on lap 96, the complexion of the race changed again. The Daytona 500 off. Oh, five. trouble, trouble, turn three. One car smashing off the wall and sliding to a halt. Caution is out. That's our pole sitter, Jeff Green, in the 30 car. Sterling Marley gets his lap back, Daryl. After pitting over the yellow, the green returned with the halfway point. Any giant rain delay would officially end the race now. Up front, sophomore driver Jimmy Johnson led. Tony Stewart, Michael Waltrip, and Jeff Gordon followed. With Waltrip making a move, he got up to second, right behind the 48 car. Bad news came for the 48 as once again, due to Junior lining up as a lap car on the inside line, the 8 and the 15 were drafting together again. But with 97 to go, the caution returned thanks to debris from Mike Skinner's number 4 Kodak Pontiac. So once again, the field would be restacked, readied, and ultimately set loose with rain visible in the horizon. The wreck would have to bring out a caution. Dale Jr. being ahead of the leader would earn one of his two laps back. One more good restart and he'd be right back in the thick of it. His DEI teammate though was hoping the race would end and probably was doing a rain dance on the other end. Only three laps later, that dance probably worked as rain covered the track and the sky turned black. NASCAR had no choice but to bring the cars down to the pits again 
and paused the race once more. After over half an hour, NASCAR called it, Michael Waltrip would be the 2003 Daytona 500 champion. As it turned out, speed-wise, this would be the best season of Michael Waltrip's career. Dale Jr.'s time at the Daytona 500 throne would come only a year later in 2004, though. Meanwhile, 2003 as a whole turned out to be the last year of many things in NASCAR. For instance, the Winston Cup Series and Full Season Points Championships. But in that day, Michael Waltrip was the man of the hour in only 109 laps, the shortest Daytona 500 ever. Now, with that, let me pass it on to you, and I want to ask you this in the comments down below. What is your favorite Daytona 500? Please let me know and let me know why. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and until next time, have a good one.